Back in the late 1990s, Rogue Entertainment was a fairly well-known games company, responsible for such titles as American McGee's Atlas and the Doom engine modification Strife. Atlas had done well in 2000, so well that publisher EA ordered a PS2 port of the game to be released for the upcoming holiday season. The problem was, there was a few problems with the PS2 back then, specifically shortages of the hardware, and EA was projected to lose money on their PlayStation 2 projects. So some cuts had to be made, and the first one was the PS2 port of Alice. Announced by then Rogue CEO Barrett Alexander the following February, quote, due to EA's untimely cancellation of our latest project, rumors about Rogue Entertainment's current situation have begun to circulate. The timing of the cancellation did leave us, quote, in a lurch, but due to the success of Alice, we have several options available to us. Rumors still circulated about Rogue's possible demise, however, those broke in April, when Alexander announced that, quote, I'm happy to say that Rogue Entertainment is still in business and we do have a new project, end quote. Many speculated on what this project was over the next month until May 14th, 2001. As only a month after the announcement of Rogue's new game, Alexander reported that the creators of Half-Life Valve Software had cancelled their new project in response to their president and co-founder Jim Morlitz leaving the company to work at Sony. The game? A single-player Counter-Strike title, Condition Zero. <laughs> On the same day as Rogue's cancellation announcement, magazine Computer Gaming World announced their July cover story, an announcement of a single-player Counter-Strike title, Condition Zero. Many were confused, isn't this the game that Valve had already cancelled? Well, according to CGW, Valve had only taken over development of the project, and the game was reported to have new weapons, new playable characters, and 16 new maps. The public was still concerned. What would happen to Rogue? Why had Valve pulled the plug? What exactly did anyone mean by a single-player Counter-Strike? The only thing the public could go on were five screenshots leaked by Voodoo Extreme following the announcement of Rogue's departure from the project. Gabe Newell, CEO and co-founder of Valve, eventually ran damage control when commenting on the same Voodoo Extreme threat. Quote, Counter-Strike Condition Zero is a collection of single-player missions. Rogue had come to us after EA had cancelled the PS2 port and said, hey, is there anything we can do for you? Unfortunately for everyone involved, Jim Molinitz decided to leave Rogue, which left Rogue, Valve, and Condition Zero in limbo. Barrett decided to fold Rogue, and Valve took the project with lead Eric Johnson. The problem with Newell's statement is that former Rogue employee Bobby Pavlik had a few things to say about Newell's comment. Quote, Valve called us, wanting to do a single-player Counter-Strike. The contract was signed and we started busting our humps to try and have a playable demo for E3 of that year. About a month after we started the project, Jim Monlinitz informed us that he decided to leave the company. We knew full well that the team could develop this title fine without Jim being there. But when we informed Valve of Jim's unexpected decision to leave, they panic. Valve felt that we had betrayed them. They thought that we knew the whole time that Jim was planning on leaving Rogue, which we didn't. So they yanked the project from us, once again leaving Rogue in an unexpected financial hole. So Gabe most likely told a few lies in the post. And to make matters worse, Rogue closed their doors shortly after. Be it as it may, in June, the new issue of Computer Gaming World releases, giving the public the first real details on what exactly Counter-Strike Condition Zero was, being 16 single-player missions taking place on multiplayer maps, with the option to play on both sides of the confrontation. The only mission really nearing completion that was talked about was in Atlanta at the Center for Disease Control. However, others were planned, such as one at the World Cup, the Channel, a Typhoon sub in Russia, Devil's Island, and NORAD. These missions would be played with AI-controlled bots that felt like multiplayer opponents, but with the objectives of each map being themed around the location. So, for example, instead of detonating a bomb, you would be stealing a virus. 16 total maps were planned along with new weapons, such as the M60 machine gun, the M79 grenade launcher, the jackhammer auto shotgun, a 357, an auto crossbow, flares, along with a suicide belt, being a T-sided weapon that allows players to run towards the enemies and detonate. If the player was killed but the belt was armed prior, the CT would have to defuse the belt using something called a universal tool, which is a CT-sided piece of equipment that would essentially act as a defuse kit for each of the map's objectives. Lastly, a concussion grenade was planned, which would push players back and force a weapon drop when exploded. Now, throughout the article, screenshots and art of the game was shown. However, the environments matched up with the screenshot from Rogue's build leaked by Voodoo Extreme, leading many to believe that what was shown was mostly Rogue's work. This was further proven by condition 
Generation Zero moving from Valve to Gearbox Interactive only two months after the announcement that Valve took over the project. On October 21st, 2001, it was announced that Valve had given the project to Gearbox due to their previous work on the Half-Life expansions, and according to Counter-Strike website CS Nation, some of the original CS devs, such as Barney, Hobbit, Postman, Mike Zilla, and Dave Johnson, were working on the game. This was shown to be true in GameSpy's first preview for the game, stating that Gearbox had, quote, started from scratch, according to Gearbox founder and CEO Randy Pitchford. However, according to Dave Johnson, creator of Dust and Dust 2, And along with me, uh, I took two maps that I'd been working on just in my own sort of personal time, one of which was Tides, which of course ended up in the game, and the other one of which was Radio Rizza, which was just a radio station that I'd made, which honestly wasn't a great map, but I thought I'd yeah, show them anyway. I have vague recollections of when, when we first got to Gearbox, we did have the, the current build of the game. I can't remember much about it. I mean, I, I remember um, one of Rogue's idea was like suicide vests. I have vague recollections of that being a feature in the game that we had. And this is along with the previews describing a build using the suicide belt and M60 machine gun described within Rogue's preview. The Game Spy preview then names playable maps being Vessel, Tides, Silo, Trailer Park, Jungle, Bridge, Stadium, Damage, Vostok, Arctic Biolab, Shoot House, Pipeline, and Desert Bunker, along with new weapons such as a FAMAS, Molotovs, Gas Grenades, and a Riot Shield. The game would revolve around the player completing multiplayer-esque missions to collect money, which then could be used to upgrade your AI's teammates' abilities by, quote, paying for their training. The AI was set to be designed by Marcus Klinge, author of the then-popular Podbot, and the engine would be upgraded to have material specific gibs, higher poly models, and a streamlined buy menu with a grenade specific category. It was also announced that all multiplayer compatible features of Condition Zero would be added into the main Counter-Strike game slowly through free updates. It's from this point until the end of 2001 that Randy Pitchford does more interviews than at all necessary, mostly repeating the same info through each. Objectives in each mission have to do with the skill in the match, like number of kills or time taken. There would be a narrative structure to the game taking place between each mission. And the missions went from being part of four episodes to five episodes, and finally to six episodes with four missions per episode. Pitchford also stated that the game felt like a new form of real time strategy and that the game was feature complete in December of 2001, so maybe this was not true. Because on December 10th, 2001, Gearbox and Valve hosted an IRC chat with Randy Pitchford and Valve's PR man Doug Lombardi. And throughout, they repeated much of what was already known, aside from the game then having a Q1 2002 release, and the game including a LA rocket launcher, a gas mask, an ammo belt, a machete, a galil, and the game would include a total of 25 maps. It's around this time that GameSpy did their second preview of Gearbox's build, and the 25 map number was repeated, with six episodes taking place around the world in the jungle, a US urban environment, Asia, a desert, European environments, and the Arctic setting. Each episode starts with the player going through personnel, arsenal, loadout, and mission menus to fine tune the team and your equipment, and each mission was set to contain three distinct modes of play, narrative, endurance, and challenge. Each would be played separately and would change the rule set of the game. Narrative would go along with the overarching storyline. Endurance would put you against a team of five AI controlled opponents with no teammates and expect eight kills. The challenge would limit the type of items and movement you could take throughout the round. Your bot teammates stuck through you throughout the entire game and could be trained in different skills using the money you accrue throughout the missions. Different things you can train them in would be explosives, rifles, tactics, small arms, and awareness, among others. But as time moved closer towards the end of Q1 2002, the game hadn't come out and didn't seem like it was going to. It wasn't. CZ was delayed on February 12th, 2002 to a second quarter 2002 release. A few more previews of the game were done around this time, and the number of maps was dropped to 20, and the fact that no LAN or custom weapon models would be supported. Gearbox then attended GDC, and a video interview was conducted by GameSpot with Randy Pitchford. Video footage of the game was shown showing the new maps, weapons, and new spectator system. Two more months passed following GDC, and the game once again did not hit its second quarter release, and it was time for E3. Randy once again did interviews, stating that the game was once again delayed, this time to fourth quarter 2002. But when December rolled around, the game still was not out. Valve was mad because of the consistent deadline misses and actually took the project away from Gearbox. It was then given to new company Ritual Entertainment. And although early interviews and previews of the company suggested that they were going to be following Gearbox's ideas, it was soon made clear that Ritual was up to 
to something completely different. Ritual's Condition Zero was a linear, narrative-driven first-person shooter with scripted missions taking place on multiplayer CS maps. Many of Gearbox's maps and weapon concepts were recycled, however, in a completely different way. The multiplayer maps were almost unrecognizable, as new props were put in the way of different areas to be able to direct the player in a linear fashion. Ritual intended on releasing the multiplayer maps of the missions that took place in full multiplayer, along with all the new weapons and items. Ritual also kept their deadlines, finishing the game in mid-2003 and announcing that the game had gone gold on October 8th, 2003. Problem was, the game wasn't highly received by the reviewers who played it. Scores came in at around the 60% range, and Valve freaked out. Only three days after the announcement that the game had gone gold, it was announced that Valve had once again moved the development, this time to Turtle Rock Studios. The entire Counter-Strike community was confused. However, the ordeal had been going on for so long, no one seemed to care that much anymore. Newell attempted to explain the situation, saying that, quote, the game had gone gold and would be on Steam on November 18th, but it didn't hit Steam on November, or in 2003. Turtle was instructed to take the game Gearbox had and finish it. But in order to do so under the incredible time constraint, they stripped and simplified many of the game's features. Most of the CZ-specific maps were scrapped in favor for prettier versions of vanilla CS maps, and the training of your teammates aspect was simplified down to a point system where you purchase different teammates with varying skill. Close to none of the new weapons were actually seen, and it ended up shipping five months before CS's sequel release, Counter-Strike Source. Ritual's build of CZ was then repackaged and stripped down into a game called Counter-Strike Condition Zero Deleted Scenes. It only shipped with 12 of the completed 20 missions. And even though Valve had taken the game away from Ritual to try and get better reviews, the final version of Condition Zero still only received mixed reviews and was forgotten about fairly quickly. And that would be the end of the story, if it wasn't for leaks. Back in 2003, a German hacker leaked Half-Life 2, among other things, such as an early build of Counter-Strike Source and Half-Life Source. Like talked about in my three-way video from last month, a folder called WMods also leaked, and within it were two early builds of Condition Zero. One called C0, which was Ritual's uncut entire build of deleted scenes, which would not be released until a few years later. And two, a folder called C Strike underscore TRS. This folder is a combination of an early version of CS Retail 1.5, along with an early build of Turtle Rock Studios Condition Zero, complete with unseen weapons, sounds, and most importantly, about half of Gearbox's unseen maps. Problem is, this build was largely broken, with one very huge game-breaking bug. For some reason, when playing against bots, which is essentially the only way you could play the game, the hit reg was almost randomized, where it would be impossible to kill any opponents in random rounds, making it incredibly difficult to win the match. This was combined with the fact that it was impossible to connect to any other player due to the server browser being stripped out of the game, and most of the maps missing textures, and a lot of the unseen weapons not actually being implemented. Well, like last time, my wizard friend Piston Miner saves the day, as he was able to find the cause of all the bugs and fix them. This is along with my last year being used to find and fix up as many of the unreleased CZ maps that are out there. And although I found nowhere near all of them, I found quite a few. And yes, you can download and play the game in the description below. It does not require Steam, it runs on its own, and I will be hosting a multiplayer server with all the unseen maps for the next week longer if it's popular enough. Link down below. The IP for the server is down in the description below as well as the server browser is still not working up to snuff. Thank you very much for watching. I have a couple other small things related to Condition Zero that I released right now. If you want to see an unboxing of the original retail release of Condition Zero, check the link down below. It's on my second channel, Valve News Extra, which is used to upload supplemental content for all the major videos I do, along with highlight reels of all my live streams and the VODs of the live streams themselves. If you want to be able to support these videos, I recommend checking out my Patreon page down in the description below, and thank you very much for watching. I'm Tyler McVicker, this is Valve News Network. Have a good day. Adios.